We're in a profound moment in history. Globally, people are uniting to demand action and companies like yours to be a catalyst for change. For 40 years, America's Charities has provided hundreds of employers with innovative donation technology and social impact solutions. We make it easy for you to engage your team and empower your workforce to support trusted charities that make our world a better place. Transformative impact at work starts with you. Visit charities.org today. Shop Black Friday week deals Sunday through Friday at Kohl's. Plus, get $15 Kohl's cash for every $50 spent. And take an extra 15% off. Get the big one throws, $849. Toastmaster small appliances are just $214 after rebate. And Fitbit Versa 2 is $129.99. Plus, take 30% off Lego, 70% off fine jewelry, and save on boots for her, $16.99. Plus, get fast and free store pickup. Shop Black Friday week deals at Kohl's and Kohl's.com. Select styles. Office valid November 22nd through the 27th. 15% off with promo code Enjoy15. Lego and Fitbit offers and coupons do not apply. Some exclusions apply. See store or Kohl's.com for details. Hello everyone and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 237. On tonight's program, we're going to discuss RICO and how a former IRS agent would go about investigating Jeffrey Epstein's co-conspirators and their financial crimes. Now, I talk about this quite a bit here on the podcast and I talk about it because I feel it's a very, very, very important part of this case. I think that a forensic accountant, or obviously a team of forensic accountants in this case, would be able to pin so many financial crimes on so many people that were involved with Jeffrey Epstein that it would end up being the crime of the century. Because all of these people are connected. All of these people have received money from Jeffrey Epstein or one of his so-called charities, which are really front companies. And once that occurs, once you have received ill-gotten gains from somebody who is under investigation for RICO, well, you now also become subject because you are part of the conspiracy in the government's eyes now since you received those ill-gotten gains. At least that's how it works when they're going after Italian folks. Now, tonight we have an article where a former IRS agent gets down into the weeds and he talks about how he would initiate an investigation, what pathway he would use, and what sort of tools would be at his disposal if he was investigating Jeffrey Epstein's financial crimes. So let's jump into this article and see what they have to say over at the Daily Beast. This article was authored by Martin Scheel on July 17th of 2019. Headline, Former IRS Agent. Here's how I'd investigate Jeffrey Epstein's finances. Financier, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein is an accused sex trafficker. This much we know. The new SDNY investigation will hopefully cure the bogus plea deal Epstein received in Florida at the direction of then U.S. Attorney Alex Acosta, who is now an ex-Secretary of Labor, due to negative publicity finally catching up to the deal and rubbing off on President Trump's, and Tr- President Trump's administration. Well, it took you guys long enough to catch on, legacy media. It took you guys long enough to give a damn. And then once Acosta was gone, all of a sudden, all the interest was gone once again. The legacy media, as I've said numerous times, is a dumpster fire. But where did Epstein's money come from? Where does it go? There are plenty of media reports suggesting that Epstein ran his own hedge fund after leaving Bear Stearns, but no one seems to know who his clients were beyond Retail King and accused abuser, Les Wexner, nor whom he traded with. One report even suggested that Epstein might have belonged to intelligence. And now remember, folks, this article is from July, right? So we have the benefit of hindsight here. We have the benefit of Monday morning quarterbacking this information. So it's interesting to see that this soon after Jeffrey Epstein's death even, there were hints about the intelligence angle. And you know that made the parasites in the legacy media absolutely paranoid because they don't want their relationships outed. Look what happened over at ABC when we got a little peek behind the curtain 
Look how ABC squashed Amy Robach's story because they still wanted access to Joe Exotic and his family. So don't think for a minute that the legacy media garbage hounds weren't paranoid over this. Well, even spies are required to pay their taxes. And this is another thing that I've said, right? If you follow the underworld, the criminal underworld, and the history of the mafia and the cartels and the Russian mafia, et cetera, et cetera, well, you know that a lot of these guys are basically serial killers, right? But they don't end up going to prison for that. They end up going to prison for stuff like wire fraud, money laundering, uh, mail fraud. You, those, those sort of financial crimes are what they get pinned with. Because it's much harder, obviously, to charge somebody with a murder, say, and make it stick, right? But when you get into the, the financials of these people and you have a quality team, a quality team of forensic accountants, boy, if you're up to no good, you stand zero chance of hiding that. Zero chance. And we have not seen that in this case. We have not seen a full charge into the financials of everybody connected. Every single person that Epstein donated money to or Epstein gave money to, every single person should be under the microscope. The bare bones financial statement provided to the federal court in Manhattan on Monday, which summarized Epstein's wealth, left out a whole lot of detail, frustrating the prosecutors, but tantalizing the rest of the world. According to his lawyers, Epstein is half a billionaire worth an excess of $500 million. Well, we know that's at $634 million now in paper funds, meaning money that we can track, money that's on paper, money that's been accounted for. But the whole entire idea and what we're talking about here is there is a lot more money out there that is not accounted for. And that money needs to be found. And if that money needs to be seized from other participants within this organization, then so be it. But all of that money should go to the survivors. Lots of cash Equity investments and properties, including offshore in the U.S. Virgin Islands, were outlined. But no real detail was included that could explain the piles of cash and dozens of diamonds found in his safe by FBI agents during a raid on his $77 million Upper East Side mansion. And the diamonds are interesting, too. How many of those diamonds were hot? How many of those diamonds were bought from, let's say, less than... uh, Less than moral... Diamond dealers, right? We all know about blood diamonds. And we all know that Jeffrey Epstein isn't going to spend more money than possible. In fact, we know he's going to try and chisel uh, the price down a bit. So let's talk about those diamonds a little bit. Where did they come from? Who did he buy those from? Do those have receipts? You know, like normal people, you buy a, a big a big purchase item like that, you probably have your receipts stashed somewhere just for, you know, safekeeping. God forbid. I know I do. So how, could, how does he account for all of the diamonds? Now the cash, that's, another, that's a whole different issue. That's a lot harder to pin down on somebody unless we're talking about banking. And then once we're talking about banking, then we have Title 31, CTRs. We're going to get into that a little bit later in this article. But there's a lot of stuff that goes with uh, cash transactions, folks. A lot of things. Nor was much explanation provided for the passport found in the safe issued by Austria with a Saudi address and bearing Epstein's photo but containing a different name. And now we know that there are a lot of ties that bind Austria with Jeffrey Epstein, right? The Lauder connection, the connection to the Reagan administration the timing of the passport being drawn, et cetera, et cetera. There is a lot more going on with that passport as well. And that definitely deserves a a deeper dive at some point because an Austrian passport is like gold. Those aren't just given out, right? Those are very difficult to to, uh, receive. And then you add a little bit more sauce to the fire. I mean, a little more sauce to the dish by having his address be in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of weird stuff going on there, folks, no doubt about it. 
and bearing Epstein's photo but containing a different name. Police have not confirmed whether the passport is legitimate or fake. Epstein's lawyers say it was just for protection against hijacking. Yeah, because that's what everybody does, huh? We all have fake passports in case our plane gets hijacked, because that happens often. I mean, this guy, what, is he watching too much Delta Force or something? Your plane's not getting hijacked, Mr. Epstein, okay? You're flying around on a private jet. Nobody's hijacking your plane. And in fact, I'll tell you what, you're as scummy as those terrorists or anybody who's going to hijack your plane. So I'd be worried about your own affairs, sir. Hijacking, I'm worried about hijacking, that's why I need another passport. I mean, what is he at, the casino? He needs a second rewards card in case he loses the first. I need a, a passport in case I get hijacked. What sort of lunacy is that? The Daily Beast has previously reported on, reported on Epstein's supposed multi-million dollar investment in a modeling agency called MC, MC2 run by his associate Jean-Luc Brunel, which allegedly sourced models from Europe. And obviously we've been talking about that for the last couple of segments, and the Jean-Luc Brunel situation is appalling. This is a man that deserves to be arrested right now, yesterday, and the day before. How is this dude still running around, living his life to the fullest, and not answering hard-ass questions under the gaze of a seasoned interrogator? Brunel has denied that Epstein helped fund his agency. Yeah, okay. Epstein, uh, Epstein is also alleged to have secretly invested $1 million in an Israeli tech startup originally called Reporty Homeland Security Limited, but now called Carbine Limited. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak is the chairman of Carbine Limited, which purports to develop call handling and identification capabilities for emergency response services. And we discussed this at length as well within our three-part uh, series on Ehud Barak. All of this stuff ties in together. And when we're talking about financials, this Ehud Barak character, Brunel, all of these people that Jeffrey Epstein gave seed money to or invested in or any of that, every single one of these companies should have their assets frozen and they should be under scrutiny by forensic accountants. Carbine Limited has offices and employees throughout South America and just opened offices in Mexico. Israel's current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, was quick to attack his rival Barack's association with Epstein, raising questions not only about Car Carbine Limited, but also queries about a 2004 transfer of $2.3 million from the Wexner Foundation, apparently made by Epstein to Barack for murky reasons. Guys... This is money laundering right here at its, at its core, okay? This money wasn't accounted for. They have receipts for all of this money? I highly doubt it. And if they do, where are they? This should be blown up in the legacy media. There, there should be, you know how they do those hour shows on all the nonsense on TV you see on a regular basis? They should have an hour show every single night exposing the people involved in this, conspira in this uh, conspiracy to commit crime, in this criminal organization. Because what went on here and what is still going on here is, is disgusting. It is enough to make you want to throw up all over the place because the people who were involved and the high levels that it reaches, these are people that have a direct influence on our life. These are people who have a direct influence on our day-to-day -day activities. And yet we continue to put our confidence in people who are morally corrupt, people who do not care about, forget their, their fellow man, they don't care about their friends or their supposed friends. But these are the sort of nar uh, narcissists that we continue to put into office, and then we wonder why things are all screwed up. Barack claimed the Wexner transfer was for research purposes and that Carbine Limited was a legitimate business that had paid all its taxes. Did they? Did Epstein? 
Given the immense of unexplained wealth accumulated by Epstein, authorities will surely give serious consideration to exploring the money trails via a criminal tax fraud and or money laundering investigation. Yeah, you think? That is the way to go, folks, okay? It is the most important tool that prosecutors have at their disposal. If they go this route, this automatically becomes a RICO case and everything opens up. I don't know how much more they need to really break out the big guns down at the SDNY and I don't know how much longer they need to start making arrests. Professor Thomas Voss show who has been researching Epstein for a book he is writing, explained to me in an email that he believes Epstein advised wealthy clients on sophisticated tax shelters when Epstein worked at Bear Stearns. Valsho further noted that Epstein controlled tons of entities, LLCs. LLC stands for limited liability companies, which are also known as shell companies used by sophisticated real estate investors to purchase luxury real properties in an anonymous fashion. They are also used by money launderers as conduits to move monies around offshore without attracting undue attention from the authorities. Typical mafioso behavior. This is the sort of thing you do when you have big money that needs to be washed. And Jeffrey Epstein and all of his friends were obviously engaging in this. From the evidence that we have, folks, from everything that we've seen, all of the evidence leads to a gigantic money laundering operation. Michael Cohn most famously made use of a shell company, LLC, called Essential Consultants as a secret conduit to conceal hush money payments from Donald Trump to porn star Stormy Daniels. Paul Manafort also famously made use of offshore shell companies and bank accounts in Cyprus and other locations to make covert luxury purchases in the States. And Paul Manafort's downfall was exactly that. Again, his financials. This is a man that would have been able to withstand the other stuff, but it was the financial misdeeds and the terrible terrible examples of money laundering that he was engaged in that sent him up the river. And a quick look at Jeffrey Epstein gives us everything we need to know that this is exactly the route that they should be taking. If a federal agent came to me and requested authorization to open up a criminal tax and or money laundering investigation regarding Epstein's unexplained cash and diamonds, as well as his alleged concealed investments into MC2 and Carbine Limited with concomitant and concealed income streams, I would likely approve. And this is the, F, this is the uh, uh, IRS agent that's speaking now, the man who was in charge of this sort of thing, these kind of investigations. And this is what I've been telling you guys from the beginning with this RICO stuff. And the only reason I know this is because I've, I've seen it happen. I've seen it unfold before my eyes. I've seen people have their whole lives ruined over RICO for mundane crimes, folks. All right. Crimes that are illegal in most state in, in every state now. Gambling crimes. And I have seen people's whole lives turned upside down over this. I've watched it in real time occur. I've seen them get their house raided by an FBI SWAT team. But yet these dudes are moving around. We're talking not a couple of hundred grand, right? We're not talking a couple of, you know, a couple of hundred boxes of ziti here. We're talking serious weight. We're talking millions and tens and tens of millions. And Jeffrey Epstein even took it a step further than someone like Paul Manafort and had his own banks opened up. So you mean to tell me that the people in the Virgin Islands, the authorities in the Virgin Islands who gave him the permits shouldn't be involved in this investigation? Oh, they most cer certainly should be. The investigation into Trump-connected lobbyist Manafort might serve as a blueprint for such an investigation. Obviously, all bank and equity accounts would require subpoenas and spreadsheet analysis. And that's where the forensic accountants come in, folks, because this is tedious work, right? You got to go through this with a fine tooth comb. Every single transaction. 
And there are people that are in that field that are exceptionally good at what they do, folks. But requests for personal tax returns with an emphasis on Schedule B for analysis would be a mandatory cross-reference. Schedule B on the 1040 form contains the famous three yes or no questions that Manafort lied about with regard to foreign bank account ownership and activity. Very important there, right? Foreign bank account ownership and activity. FinCEN databases would also need to be queried. Now we're getting into some stuff that I know about because I had to deal with it at my former job. Now, for those of you who have been listening to the podcast or, you know, know me in real life, know that I worked at Cantor Fitzgerald, which is a huge, gigantic company on Wall Street. Now, I worked in their gaming division in Las Vegas, managing sports books and working in sports books. And we were very much involved with this sort of thing. Suspicious, suspicious activity reports, the FinCEN database, Title 31, all of these things that have to do with finances and uh, financial transactions, et cetera, et cetera. We were using these things on a daily basis. For example, say somebody came in and they were acting suspicious, right? They were going to make a wager and it was just a suspicious situation. And the ticket writer had a bad feeling about it and decided that they wanted to talk to the supervisor and fill out a SARC. Well, All of those SARCs that get filled out, no matter how mundane they might be, once those SARCs get filled out, they get put into a database. And that database is the FinCEN database. And the authorities, the feds, have access to that database and they can go in there at any time and search it, search it for the SARS and the SARCs to see if the people that they're investigating pop up in the system. And it was, there were a lot of SARCs written up. There's no doubt about it because you want to cover your ass, right? From a company perspective, you want to make sure that you're in CYA mode at all times and it doesn't hurt to file the SARC. So we were, we filed them, you know, at a, at a decent clip when we thought it was necessary. But this is all huge, huge, huge money laundering stuff here. And in a a job like a sports book, you always have to be aware of people trying to use that to wash their money. So we were definitely aware of that stuff and we tried to stay on top of it. And I had a bunch of different training classes about all of this financial stuff. So that's why it jumps out to me so much, right? That's why I'm such a stickler about it. And I'm always talking about the RICO aspect of this case because folks, it is, they are, the, the feds don't play around when it comes to this stuff. They do not play around. First and foremost, all suspicious activity reports, SARS, would need to be scrutinized. FinCEN had over 20 SARS on Manafort in their database regarding his suspicious foreign bank account activities using shell companies. And I can only imagine what the FinCEN database has on Jeffrey Epstein and what has been ignored by regulators. What might this database reveal concerning Epstein's foreign financial transactions? Is there a SAR existent with regard to the 2004 wire transfer to Ehud Barak? Are there other SARs available regarding suspicious foreign bank account activity in recent years by Epstein? These are huge questions, and these questions will go very, very far into getting to the heart of this whole entire disgusting, corrupt operation. How did Epstein get his million-dollar investment in Carbine to Barak? Wire transfer to Barack's LLC in Israel? Did Epstein file the required foreign bank account record, FBAR, with FinCEN? Manafort ended up pleading to multiple counts of FBAR felonies after he was caught lying to his accountants about not being required to file. Does FinCEN have any FBARs on record for Epstein with regard to his foreign financial transactions? And if not, why not? That's huge, folks, because if he doesn't, that just, it will definitely go to move things forward as far as this being a gigantic cover-up. Because you're, you, you cannot get it by me and, and try and tell me that there's no SARS on this guy. Because the way he was handling his money, 
If he was in my sports book making transactions like this, wiring this kind of money in, et cetera, et cetera, I would have definitely sarked him. Not even a question. He would have definitely got hit with a, a, suspicious, a suspicious activity report. Zero chance that he wouldn't have. So there's, it's very hard for me to believe that there are no F-bars on record for him in Finson. Does the IRS have foreign account tax compliance FATCA files available on Epstein that might inform with regard to Epstein's foreign financial transactions? Have local New York and Florida banks filed currency transaction reports, CTRs, with FinCEN regarding cash deposits and or withdrawals by Epstein that might explain the tons of cash found in his safe? And what CTRs are is any time that you are withdrawing or depositing $10,000 and one cent, you have to fill out a CTR. And that's a, a currency transaction report. Title 31 currency transaction report. So you'll, you need to give up your social security card. You need to fill out a, uh, a W-9 if you don't have one on file with the, the institution. It's a whole thing, right? It's a big deal. It's all about money laundering. A lot of it came into effect after the Patriot Act. You know, there's a lot of things that happened. But the fact of the matter is this. If he was engaging in any sort of cash transaction that was above $10,000, well, there, there should be CTRs to report that. And if there isn't, the people who didn't file the CTRs were obviously in on the take. So, where are the arrests? A careful FinCEN database query on each of Epstein's four potential conspirator, co-conspirators from his Florida plea, my, plea deal might also be fruitful. Folks, how long have I told you this, okay? This is the key here. you got to go after all of these people, and that's how it goes. Certainly, queries should also be made for any names associated with Epstein, such as the alleged alias on his Austri Austrian passport. All of the people who were engaged with any sort of financial transactions with Epstein have to be brought in, but especially the core four. You start digging into their financials, were they as smooth as Epstein? Did they have Indyke and Khan to hide their financials? What happened after Epstein died? Were, these, were, were Darren Indyke and Khan still involved helping? So who knows, right? But the, the point is, you have to track this stuff down. You have to chase this stuff down. And that's why these tools are, are there. F-bars and CTRs and SARCs, etc., etc. So the only way Epstein could have gotten away with this for all these years at Deutsche Bank, at J.P. Morgan, and elsewhere, is if the bankers themselves were on the take with him. That is my opinion, folks. There is no way that all of these regulators overlooked all of these transactions. They didn't file the F-bars. They didn't have CTRs on file. There's, oh, no, nobody's, there's no Sarks on him. No way. Jeffrey Epstein, he's never been suspicious ever once in his life. Well, the game is up. We are on to you. The bankster gangsters and their disgusting friends like Jeffrey Epstein have done nothing but cause misery for the rest of us. And it's about time that they start answering some hard questions. Hedge fund operators, spies, and sex traffickers are all, supp all supposed to pay their taxes. The above financial investigative steps would be recommended to the SDNY in the case of Jeffrey Epstein, whatever the mysterious or potentially potentially bad source of his income might be. And uh, look, I'm, I certainly never worked for the IRS, right? I, that's like working for a dark army in my opinion, but all kidding aside, honestly, from just from the job that I used to do managing sports books and how berserk I used to make myself over fine, the, the financials, meaning what's coming across the desk and if it should be sarked, if it's acceptable, is this guy trying to launder money with us? Should I, you know, did everybody get the right, did everybody file the CTRs that they're supposed to if they're making bigger bets? So these are the kind of things that I know are super serious. And when we're talking about a huge criminal organization like Jeffrey Epstein's, these are the tools 
that the investigators have at their disposal that they can use to initiate the RICO indictments. So the question I have for the prosecutors and for everybody else involved in this case, as far as those at the Department of Justice and in the governments around the world, my question to you is this. What are you waiting for? If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. Inside of the description box, you'll be able to find a link to this article, and you will also be able to find a link to the GoFundMe account for the podcast if you enjoy our content and you would like to help us out. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow, and we will start all over again. The care that helps you be the best you just got stronger. Healthcare Partners is now Optum, and our doctors are advancing a simple idea that your healthcare can be more personalized, more compassionate, and more convenient. Healthcare Partners is now Optum, healthcare made stronger. To learn more, visit Optum.com slash California or click the ad. Optum and Optum Care are trademarks of Optum Incorporated. At Westcom Credit Union, we know a lot of planning goes into a wedding, like whether to invite your third cousin once removed. But too often, not enough planning goes into your finances as a couple. That's why at Westcom, we want to help you get off to a great start with online tools to help you create a budget and great credit card rates. So even if you don't invite us to the wedding, we invite you to check us out at westcomtogether.com. Westcom. Together, we can do great things. Westcom is insured by NCUA. Certain terms and conditions may apply.